Okay. Uh, is anyone here who hasn't been to the last session? To the previous one? Okay. Some. Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna. So I'm Gavin, software developer from Austria, and been playing with the Google Plus, the various Google Plus platforms since they started. And now uh, we're gonna have a talk about the Hangouts API. So a quick recap, uh, recap from the previous session. Uh, Hangout applications are applications that run inside of a Hangout, inside of an iframe, and you get API. You have the API to access various information about the Hangout and you have events to react to things that change in the Hangout. <coughs> if you define a Hangout application, what you need is an XML file which includes your Hangout app name. What you need to request is you have two features which you need to request which is RPC and views. You need those features to allow communication from your iframe to the Hangout outside. Then inside of the XML you define, you probably would want to have a, uh, your style sheet. What you need is the JavaScript file for the Hangouts API, which at the moment is in version 1.3. Then you need to define your DOM, your HTML for your, for your application, and you will also need the script file which handles all the JavaScript for your application. <coughs> What you need to do once you have this XML file, you will want to go to the API console and don't know how many, I haven't shown it in the last session, how many know the API console. It's basically the starting point for everything you want to do with Google APIs, so it would, it would have been a good idea if we shown it last session. But what you do in here, you define, you create a new project, then in services, what you need, will want is to in this case, you want the Google Plus Hangouts API. Because I'm using this project for all the DevFest demos I did, I have all three Google Plus APIs activated in here. What you also need for Hangouts application is OAuth tokens. So if you go to API access, you can create a client ID, which will give you your client ID, client secret, whatever. And then for the special case of Hangouts application, you get an extra menu item, which is Hangouts. Inside of here, you need the link to your XML file, which I shown earlier. You can decide if you want a main application or an extension. So the difference is, do I have my Hangouts still running? Uh, I think so. So the difference is a main application, it go, goes over the whole screen. But if I have an extension, let's see if I have an extension somewhere. Yeah, let's take the toolbox. So a Hangout, ex oh, where is it? So an extension only runs on the side, so you can still have the main video showing, and you have the Hangout toolbox, uh, so in this case the extension on one side. So one important thing about when you write Hangout application is that you have to make sure that all your that you only have limited space and the space can change quite a lot. So for the Hangout extension, you have like 300 pixels width. This is fixed, but you can have you see in this case you have the whole width, but you have to make sure if people resize the window, bigger screens, smaller screens. And for the main application, the problem is if where's my main application again? Uh, there, so you see in this case, it's smaller, but if you hide the extension on this side, it gets wider. So you have to make sure you have quite a dynamic, <coughs> dynamic layer because the dimensions can change quite a bit. And if, especially if I open this one, you see this, so now the screen gets too small. So you, that's one thing you have to make sure about that your application displays nicely no matter what dimensions your user uses. And <coughs> where's the console? Yeah. So then inside the console, you can also, if you need it, can request additional scopes. So for example, as I've shown you earlier, the history API, if you want to do something with the history API inside of Hangout app, you can actually define that you add the scope, which was the moments.write scope in here, or you can access, for example, latitude or whatever, or if you need to write stuff to drive, you can also request access to the drive API in here. Because the thing is, the first thing you, the first time you start an application, 
you will be asked for authentication and it uses the normal uh, hangout scopes to request your hangout information, but you can also request additional which will be requested in the same authentication so you don't need an, ec an extra authentication if you need more permissions. <coughs> then of course you define uh, yeah, the name of the application, a title which will be displayed if you go to add apps and recent. You see this is the information which will be displayed in the pop. Then you can define some icons in various sizes which define your application. And then also which is requested if you make your Hangout application public is that you have some terms of services and privacy policy linked to. And the uh, main important thing why I've been talking to some Googlers is that at least what you mention in there is what you do with the data of the user. <coughs> so you don't have to make a completely legally uh, privacy policy for Google, they only want that you explicitly write what information you're using of the user, what you're doing with the information. So for example, if you're taking photos and uploading into the Google Drive, you have to write this in your privacy statement so that people know about it. <coughs> and then you don't need to make your application public right away. You can use it in a developer hangout sandbox. If you want to make it public, you have a, a one-time fee for the Chrome Web Store. This is one time for all your applications. And if you already have a Chrome Web Store account, if you've already paid the fee, I think it's like $25, then you don't have to buy it again. That's just a one-time fee. The thing is, at the moment, you, this doesn't mean that your application gets into the Chrome Web Store, unfortunately, but I'm hoping they will do that at some point. So with this in, you can actually already, as I've shown you earlier, you can actually start the empty application already. I'm just going to hide this one. So this is just the empty XML with no extra JavaScript or not much extra JavaScript. And if you go in here again, if you go to inspect and into the console, I'm just going to clear this. No. So, as I said earlier, the most important thing if you feel debugging on playing with Hangout applications is that you change the frame to the correct one, which in this case will be the gadget one. So it's always gadget and then depending on how many applications you start, it will be gadget 0, gadget 1, gadget 2. <coughs> and inside of here you can take a look at the requests you can do. So we're going to go a little bit more into detail now, now. So in the main name frame you have basically access to participant information and some basic information about the Hangout. For example, you get the Hangout URL. So if you get, go to .get hangout URL. Oh no, URL is it. You get the ID of the Hangout. So one thing you could use this voice because sometimes uh, the requests are by people who are doing support that they want if a person starts a support hangout they want to be notified so some support person can join the hangout so you can use this the person starts the hangout you start your application you get the hangout URL and send it to your server in some way so that someone gets notified that they can join the hangout to offer support because that's one request that people often have how do I know that my customers start a hangout and want to talk to me so that's one way to do that <coughs> you also have the access to the hangout topic and some basic things like if my application is actually visible so if I change it and in this case oh, copy is app visible? I get false because I've hidden it. And if I open it uh, again, no, no. Okay, oh, strange. Okay, yeah, probably because it's on the other window. Might be. I'm not sure. But actually, also have uh, events to request if somebody hides the application that you, for example, stop 
processing if somebody moves up application into the background. <coughs> so, so the first thing you need to do when you write Hangout application is to actually wait for the Hangout API to be ready. So in your JavaScript, you actually need one f uh, need to add an event listener for the garbage hangout on API ready. And once this event fires and the API is ready, then you can actually start doing stuff because then you can be sure that the shared state is ready. You can access participants so that all the information that the application needs can be called. <coughs> so as I've shown, so as I said, there's one, one part you can access other participants. And I've shown this earlier, but just to go into more detail, get participants. So as you can see, you actually don't need to do much coding before you can actually play with the API. You just need to basic XML with the API loaded, start the application, then you can see what's inside of the API and play around with it already a little bit. <coughs> So in this case, I said I'm the only participant in this Hangout because I invited no one. Uh, so I get, yeah, I have the person and my display name and my Google ID, and I have the Hangout participant ID, which is unique to this Hangout. And if I would be in this Hangout twice, I would have a second participant ID with the same person ID. And you can, except for requesting the participants, what you can also do, you can request only the participants who have, are, you, is, are using the application, for example, so you can get the enabled participants. And for all those, you also have requests that if somebody on able, on enabled participants change would be invented fires if somebody starts or stops your application. You can also just request for on participants enabled, just, just the event, who has started my application right now. So if somebody joins the Hangout and doesn't start the application yet, you don't care about them, but once they start the application, you want to do something with them to add them to the application. And you also have the same if they stop the application. So for example, if you, again, if you have a game, for example, and somebody leaves the game, which would be on participants disabled, and on participants removed if they leave the hangout, you might want to react to this somehow because otherwise if it's this player's turn and he leaves, the game would be stuck, for example. Then the shared state, which is probably the most interesting part of the Hangouts API. You have one state for everyone who is using your application, so it's one state for one application inside of the hangout. The shared state is just you have string keys and string values which you can assign, remove, query for. As long as the Hangout is running, so even if you leave the Hangout and come back, the state will be preserved. And if you start another application and then come back to your application, the state will still be the same. So maybe one example where I'm using this, which is fairly new, where is it? Hangout cube. <coughs> this is a fun one. So what I have here is a Rubik's cube. Let's just shuffle it. <coughs> so for, this is done in all CSS3, JavaScript, no Flash, no nothing. All pure CSS, HTML5. So what you can see is I have, let's just see, I have this. Let's remember this one. I have yellow, white, yellow, and I have blue, 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 and I'm just going to refresh the Hangout. So I dropped out. I, I'm almost done solving my cube, and then my internet connection crashes, and I have to come back. <coughs> and if I start this again, let's hope this works. There, it's still the way it was. So what actually with this application, this state is shared between all participants. So once somebody else joins, everybody can solve the cube together. Or you can show some, oh, you can do this to solve it quicker. So, yeah, I'm not going to solve it now, but I could. <coughs> so that's one thing. The, uh, the important thing is, so it's preserved as long as the Hangout is running. And I think even if you're the only person in the Hangout, the Hangout session is preserved for several minutes that you can join again and join the same Hangout again. 
if this timeout is over, you would start a new hangout, and then the state would be lost. As for writing it, when you write to the state, you can't query it immediately. It's asynchronous. And if two people write at the same time, one will overwrite the other. So if the one who's a little bit later will overwrite the state. And <coughs> because it's asynchronous, you have to wait and you actually have an event for this, which is the on state changed event, which is called as soon as something changes. And in my, where is it, template? Or actually, yeah, let's do this one. Uh, oh, console. Look. So in this one, I actually have registered the event and data to set value. So you see, it took there are some milliseconds, and the state change event was called where I now have the new event. But if you call the same well key with the same value again, the event won't be called because the state didn't change. <coughs> and uh, this uh, function, even if you, if you change it yourself, you get the callback that it's changed. So you have to be careful if you do some updating that you don't do. OK, I get an update of the change. It changed something, send it back, that you don't get in infinite loops because you re react to the on-state change and to change it. So. Yeah. How can I prevent a malicious user from um, making it garbage? Uh, you can't. Because as you see, I can just write some stupid thing into it using the console. So some things you could do is if you uh, take your participant hangout ID, which is unique and add it to the key. So for example, if you want to make sure that everybody has their own state, so to speak, you could make your key like, uh, let's set value, and then I, then I use my get local participant ID and just prefix my key with it, because in this case I have now the state. So in this case I would have a unique key which only I could use. But then again of course I can still look into the state, see this variable and overwrite it. Even if I don't have the participant ID. <coughs> so that's the, the dangerous thing about the shared state. If somebody comes in and changes something it might break your application. So we'll, we'll have to check if the value is still an integer if we wrote an integer as a string encoded integer. <coughs> Uh, everybody who is in the hangout, even if, even if, yeah, it's only for the people inside of the hangout. But the thing is, it depends on what you're doing with the hangout application. I'm not sure what hangout applications they have in mind, but if you take, for example, let's say games, and somebody changes his score, people will notice that it's cheating and I'm not going to play with them anymore. It's just, it's, I think that's one thing that's actually self-regulating because you have people interacting with people. If and, and, and if people notice, okay, someone isn't doing what he's supposed to do or he's cheating or he's doing some malicious stuff, you just block him from the hangout. Well, I had in mind that maybe someone could, uh, if you're in a hangout with someone yeah. and, and you know that the application has some XSS flaw or something like that, then yeah. you can uh, change the, the, the shared state and to to take over his computer or something like that. Uh, or his browser session at least. Uh, actually, you can, you are in an iframe and you can't break out of this iframe. This is running inside of an iframe and you only have the API calls to go outside. Okay. So, there should, your application is basically sandboxed in there, except for the API calls you can do into the and out. So I'm not sure if that would be a problem. So and, and, and the, the iframe runs on the Google server or some, some other? <coughs> uh, actually, um, normally it runs on the Google server. There's uh, uh, something which is called the Hangout iframer, which allows you to host the iframe on your own server, which is 
interesting if you're using some cross-origin resource sharing stuff. You can actually host a Hangout on your server, so you don't, can request resources from your server without problems. So there's a way to do that. It's called, I'm just going to Hangout iFramer. Yeah, you just find it like that. And this just allows you to, you add some extra JavaScript and then say, okay, that the XML file is on my server and it hosts everything from there. And you don't need the XML for that, you just add a special XML to do that for you. <coughs> but yeah, so the shared state isn't secure. So what you, if you want to really have a secure version, you would have to use your own shared state implementation somehow. <coughs> because in this case, I just go into console and write stuff into the... Or you have, for example, what you also could do is have one master user who takes care of the stat and who checks if all the input is valid before everybody else can use the stat. That's also one thing. So he gets... Only the master user would check all the state and then it would come back to the user only the verified state, so to speak. That's one thing you could also do. The thing is with the shared state, uh, one problem also with the shared state is it, uh, that you don't actually see who changed it. So you see when it was changed, but you don't get the user who last changed the state, which is... <coughs> but that's why I'm writing it. Yeah, it's easy to manipulate. Very easy. If you know a little bit of JavaScript, it's just going and... So as I said, uh, so you have the unstate changed event where you have where you get the information which keys have been added to the state or removed. You get the full state. You can request the full state. You can uh, get one value of the state. You can set the value. You can clear the value. Or you can also, if you have uh, several keys to update, what you can do is you can do a submit delta. And I'm just going to show how this looks like. Uh, let's do a submit delta and in here I want a new key 2 which is set to value 2 and I want to add the second key which I want to add value 3 so I'm adding in this case two keys you can add more if you want and I'm gonna remove I think our original was I'm just gonna remove the key value from the state so in this case I'm changing the whole state oops what's there eh? Where is it? There is it. Good, good. Uh, what did I do? What did I do? Ah, there it is. Thanks. Ah, and then there's not. That's in the data. Ah, that looks better. So in this case, I have two edit keys which is my key 3 and my key 2. I have one removed key, which is my key. And so the state now has <coughs> key 2, key 3. I think the test values are from earlier, because I'm still in the same Hangout. And then I have the, this one, which I create with the Hangout ID, a Hangout participant ID. The other thing is uh, because, the, as I said, this, the shared state this is not the fastest, but it's uh, make sure that every information arrives. But it can be that you can't. Uh, you also have a rate limit in on the shared state. You, I think it's at about one update per second, which you can set to the shared state, and then will you get if you do, are too fast, you will get a block of time when you can't update. But uh, to work around it, if you need quick updates, if you're doing some real time interaction where you want to make sure everybody sees what everybody is doing right away. So if, for example, I'm moving my mouse, drawing something, and everybody gets the state right away. What you can do is use messages. So messages is just a string message, but you can just use JSON encode. <coughs> and this one will, it just takes a couple of milliseconds, really, for those messages to arrive. But uh, the problem is they are... Uh, lossy, so not every message might arrive, so we want to make sure to, to send out the message several times to make sure it arrives. 
So one thing you can do use this for is if you want to update the uh, current position of a user, you can just keep track of it and send, okay, this is my current information. And in this case, you also have the sender information. So you have, okay, participant A has now sent this message and you can react to this. But this one, uh, it's not preserved. So if you, want to ha if you have information that you want to make sure everybody sees, you still want to write it into the shared state. So what I did for like a 3D game sort of thing is I sent the current position of each participant via the send messages, but then also on the one second interval I would write it into the shared state so that somebody who joins the Hangout Fresh also gets the information and if somebody leaves that the information doesn't get lost. <coughs> I wonder, so it's really just simple, you send a send message as a string and then you have the event on message received where you get the sender and the message which you can use. But then again, also in this case, you have to make sure that the message receive is actually in the format you can use because I, again, I can just go into console and send a bogus message. So that's one thing with those functions. If you are expecting that you have people who want to misuse your application, you will always have to check that this is the correct type, that you can actually, that it has the correct values. So let's see if I have an example for the. Uh, what do we do? Oh, yeah, yeah, one thing where I used it, I don't know how many have seen the Gem with Chrome application which came out like in those days. Okay. So actually, I did something similar several months ago. This thing allows you to play music with others and because the shared state is too slow I'm sending it via the send message so once I click here yep, this message will be played on all the others as well because they, in this instant they get the message and everybody sees the same so in this case I have piano and so this one uses the send message because I want to make sure everybody is in sync because the problem with playing music online together is always you have the lag but actually with the send message you don't have this because in this case I sent, just sent a message, okay, he played this drum and everybody has the sound locally and plays the sound for them. <coughs> it's a bit, yeah. So I actually tried this with two computers and I pressed the key on this one and I heard the sound immediately on the other computer, so it's very fast. <coughs> so, let's see, any questions so far? Yeah. Uh, with the shared state, uh, how can you make uh, sure that uh, if two users change it simultaneously, um, is it, has it a kind of uh, timestamp or how? Uh, you actually have a timestamp, but you still don't know who changed it. So it's still t you can't check it. It's always the one who arrives later, which will override the other one. So one thing you can do, as I shown, that you actually keep a state for each of the participants, which you prefix with the participant ID, and then you check the timestamp and see which one is actually the most current one. So you have not one key, but you have one key for each participant, and then you check the meta state, which is the most recent one from the timestamp. That's one thing to work around that. Okay. So, let's go to some fun stuff. Overlays. So what you can do, <coughs> so this is all part of the API. What you can do, you can display overlays on your face or on the video. So for example, I don't know how many people know the standard effects application, if you find it. Google, Google effects, Google effects. Not sounds. Want to see my face, and I think I need a beard. I don't have enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, this is just a face tracking overlay. It lags a bit, a little bit behind, as you see, but it works well. And you have access to this in your applications as well, so you can do overlays yourself. Uh, remove, remove. Yeah. So. So. 
the thing is, uh, those are added on top of your video. Everybody in the Hangout will see it. So if you add an overlay to your face, everybody else will see the video. So it's added to the video before the video goes into the Hangout, really. Uh, you can choose if you want static overlays. For example, if you have the lower third you want to display in a broadcast, this won't move with your face because it would be irritating. It used to do that, but they have static overlays now, thankfully. <coughs> and one thing to remember, I'm just going to start the lower third now, just to show this. Uh, lower third. You see, there's the lower third application, and as you see, it's mirrored. But that's the thing because your own video, per standard, is mirrored because otherwise you would be, if you look at your own video, it would be the wrong way around. But what they added now is the possibility in the API to actually mirror your image so that it looks correct <coughs> to you as well if you want to check if you haven't put any wrong text in it. <coughs> so as you can see, this is a static overlay which doesn't move. And so if you, if you look at how this is done, so the first thing you need to do, you need an image resource, which is loaded just an image from a URL. And then for the static overlay, you just create the overlay and then you can set the scale, set the position. position. And the position, it's always uh, relative to the video. So you have the video stream is width one, height one, and then you just send it relative to this. So the center is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and actually takes the center of the image as reference point. So if you use 0 0.5, 0 0.5, as a, or, uh, or is it 0, 0, center? Okay, I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, it will use the center of your image as a reference point. So you would may, might have to do some calculations to get it in the right position, which might be a little bit tricky somehow. And then you just set the overlay to visible. And when you don't need the resource anymore and want to make sure it doesn't take up resources, you could dispose it, but this will also delete the overlay if it's still di displayed. So I'm just going to take my, where is it, uh, too many applications, the playground, hide this one, <coughs> mm, display static overlay, and in this case, I just have yeah, a video which is, yeah, in the middle. And I think in this case, set scale. Yeah, so zero, zero is the middle, and then you have the window from minus one to plus one. And just gonna set this to false. So actually, this application here, which uh, allows you to play around with various API things, so, uh, so that you don't always have to go over to the console to do stuff. And uh, this application is public. You can have to I show the links afterwards. So this is one thing where you can start playing around with it because you can have. Uh, can I have some examples what you can do, like resetting the shared state, and I have a callback <laughs> which adds the information here. And yeah. And as I said, uh, the face tracking overlay. It's almost the same like the static overlay. You create your image over overlay, uh, image resource. You create a face tracking overlay in this case. And then you say what feature you want to have tracked. So for example, if you take a look at the features here you have, you see you have all kinds of information. You have the left eye, left eyebrow, lower lip, mouth center, mouth left, mouth right. You have all sorts of stuff and you also have the information about the pan, roll, tilt, depending on how your face is adjusted. <coughs> so you just choose one of those features you want to have tracked, nose root for example. You set the scale of the overlay, Set you can actually set an offset if you want to have it a little bit higher than your reference point. And then you can set if it should rotate with your face, if it should scale with your face, if your face gets larger. And if we take a look at this, display face tracking overlay, execute. Now I have a GDG logo on my head. Wait, I'm gonna just make this large. So, yeah, amazing, isn't it? <laughs> and as you see, it's a little bit laggy, but 
So what I've seen uh, people do, I think it was for uh, Hangouts Hackathon a while ago, is they added a unicorn horn to your head and you had to catch donuts with the horn. So you can do all st sorts of stupid thing with this really. And I think I need to get rid of this set. Uh, false. <coughs> so one important thing, if you do this, you have to keep a reference to your overlay because otherwise you won't be able to remove it anymore except for restarting the Hangout. <coughs> so there's no call to, yeah? No call for remove all? No. Okay. Just a call for this one resource. So. <laughs> Weird. At least I haven't found it yet. <laughs> and so, as you've seen, you can also access the face tracking information directly. One fun application which, was, has, which somebody has done, which I think is quite nice, is if I find it, the 3D head. This one actually allows you, you see, this one moves with a face and actually he uses the volume to <coughs> make sure my mouth moves. I think this is actually a quite a fun one. And uh, So what he does in this one is to smooth, because use the face tracking information, it's very jumpy. You get, and so what he does, he uses like, I think the last five frames he gets and smooths over them. So he does an average over the last five informations to make sure the, in the movement is a little bit smoother. And yeah. So, let's see what else we have. Yeah, so, as I said, there's a lot in there. Probably the best, so probably the best way to get started is either use an empty frame or use the API playground if you want. <coughs> and then just go into the console and start playing around with the uh, hangout object. For example, you have the, so from the namespace, you have the data namespace, which handles the shared state and the messages. You have the audio video, audio video, where you can mute your camera, mute your microphone, for example, you can uh, double mute. So I just set the camera mute to difference, and you see my camera and microphone have been muted. And inside there you also have the effects and inside of the effects you have all the face tracking <coughs> stuff and also you can create audio resources which are played. And then you have, yeah, we had the data, you have the layout which allows you to uh, see if somebody duggles the chat so you can see if, you're, if you have to re react to some sort of uh, resizing of the frame. If somebody duggles the chat, your application will again get smaller than it was before. You can set no send notices, which are uh, actually have, let's see, uh, where am I? Gabby.hangout.layout. Display notice, let's see, test. And then somewhere you get the notification on top here. So this you can use to inform users about important changes about the application. And that was the layout part. If you have the and then you also have the on air part which is fairly new, which has some special uh, API calls if you are using a Hangout on Air. Most of those calls are only available to the broadcaster himself, so other people won't be able to use them. For example, what you can get is the YouTube Live ID, which is the URL of the broadcast. You can see if you are actually broadcasting right now or if your broadcast is on pause, and then you can define people who are in the broadcast, so you don't, if you have like 10 people in your Hangout and you want to say, okay, only want to display three of them, you can actually define this, okay, those three are now visible in the broadcast and the others aren't. So for example, th this makes sure that if new people join the Hangout, you can bring them on air at the moment you want to. And I think 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just thinking a bit uh, if I have anything to show you. <coughs> Yeah, so basically what you can do inside of here is everything you would do in a normal web application, but you have the added bonus that you have the interaction with other people. So, for example, one application I did was if you, you, have the, you have the YouTube watching already in there, but sometimes you want to share photos with your family, for example, you have, want to talk about your last vacation with your family. So I did the photo share application. This one... Searching albums, it work? Yeah, so this one actually uses the Picasa data API to get my photos which I've uploaded and then I can choose my photos and then this frame here is synced for all participants again so everybody will see the photo I've chosen and then somebody else can go and add another photo. So this is one application I did and what else do we have? So you have all sorts of fun games in here. But actually, so it's really easy to get started with Hangout app development, I think. If you know a little bit of JavaScript and HTML, it's actually all you need. So, yeah, time for questions. Or if there are any special things you would like to see inside, done inside of a Hangout. Yeah? Can you talk a little bit about the mobile app for Hangouts? Is there a similar APIs? Uh, there are no applications. So actually the mobile app for Hangouts, it works completely different than the Hangout on computer because most of the calls of the API they depend on the Google Talk plugin because all of the communication is done via the Google Talk plugin. So those are not available on Android yet or on other mobile or on iPhone. So. So if you say it requires the Google Talk plugin, does it does it mean it doesn't work on Firefox or you Explorer? have to no you have the Google Talk plugin on Firefox and Internet Explorer as well. It's just the one you use for you you need the Google Talk plugin anyway to run Hangouts. It's the one that does all the video audio communication. So I can't create a, a Hangout just for playing tic tac toe without um, let's say a camera. Uh, you can use Hangouts with a camera. But I can't use them without the Google Talk plugin. Yeah, but you have to, yeah you have the Google Talk plugin anyway. If you the first time you start the Hangout, you will be asked to install the Talk plugin. But you need this for all the communication that goes on inside of the Hangout. Mm -hmm. okay. But I hope that at some point you will go away from the Talk plugin and use WebRTC and modern technologies, hopefully. But for now, you need the Talk plugin. And the thing is. Uh, one problem is if they introduce new features in the API, it has been in the past that you needed a newer version of the talk plugin. So sometimes it happened when with the API launch that not everybody had the talk plugin updated yet, so some features didn't work for them. So, so that's one, especially when they introduced the whole messaging thing. I wanted to try it and somehow it didn't work until someone told me, oh, you need a new talk plugin, which isn't out yet. <laughs> But that's also the, so that's why it doesn't work on Android because there is no talk plugin for Android and the whole video chat conversation is totally different implemented. So they only get the video and audio stream <coughs> on the Android. Yeah. No questions. Okay. So <coughs> all of the information. Uh, yeah, so you get all the documentation information at developers.google.com slash plus. You have the whole API reference, examples, client libraries there. And then all the stuff i shown today, it's on allmyplus.com slash devfest. If you go here, you have all the REST API history, API example, and also the link to start the Hangouts API playground, if you want to get started with playing around with that. And I also have the sources for both of them. So actually, I think I haven't really shown. Uh, 
actually shown the JavaScript for one of those yet. So if, as you can see, as I said, you need the on API ready event. And then it's just start the application. And for example, here just register events for the on face tracking data changed, on message received, on participants changed. And in this case, I just put the information out into the diffs of the Hangout API uh, of the playgrounds to show them. But in here, you can access all the information and use it in some way. As you can see, it's just pure JavaScript with some API calls inside. So this is actually the whole source code for the Hangout API Playground, which already does a lot. And if you take a look at the... Uh, what can you call it? I just use text editor, really. So I use Sublime, but it doesn't matter what text editor you use, because it's anything you would use to develop a web application. So I'm using Sublime text because I like it. So this is just a basic layout of a Hangout application. So I think this is the bare minimum you would need. You have the on API ready request. And once you start the application, you will want to have an on state changed event in most cases, and probably also an on participants changed event. And then you just do whatever you want to do in there. But I think that's the about the smallest Hangout application that you will want to have. And so the sources of the also are also available on the on this URL. And I also have some other examples with, uh, which I have on GitHub and Google Code where I have examples for all kinds of different Hangouts applications and also other Google Plus applications. What's on your wish list? Like, what should the API provide that you can't access now? Uh, so one thing for the Hangouts API, which I would find, would find in interesting, is actually access to the video and audio streams so that it could actually do something with the video itself. Like and filters. Yeah, like filters or just, for example, I did one thing where I didn't use the Hangouts API because it didn't work there, is to take a screenshot of the Hangout and then write this screenshot into Google Drive. So I have my Hangout moment saved. So I used the Chrome extension and I just extracted the information from the DOM to get the video information and write it into the Drive API. But it would be nice, it actually would be nice if I could just get stills of the videos. I don't need a full video stream. But for the audio stream, because if I could plug the audio stream into the web audio, audio API, you could do, do all sorts of funny stuff with voice <coughs> control and who knows what. Because at the moment, what you can get from the audio stream, you get the volume level people are talking, so you have a volume level from one, two, three, four, five, which you can access, which is actually the same, which is, uh, where's the Hangout? So this is actually the same five dots which are displayed on top here. You have information about each participant, what's their current audio level. So I think uh, one application someone did is, uh, is a draw with my face, where they actually screamed into the audio to make the line with, so the louder the word the wine was drawing with, and they were just drawing with <laughs> <laughs> so I saw a demo video of this where some people were just going so ah to draw so they used face tracking and the volume level to control the width of the line but yeah but you could do like a uh, um, side scene yeah. yeah with voice shouting and you could combine it with the new uh, Microsoft technique <coughs> for instant translation if you, you had, if you would have access to, okay. to the sound yeah 
Yeah. Yeah, you could do uh, like trans live transcriptions for, especially for people with uh, audio problems. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hearing problems. Hearing problems. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And yeah. what's your next project? Uh, I'm actually not quite sure yet. So my last project was this cube thing, which was just a fun thing. And yeah, I'm not quite sure yet actually. Do I have anything in my, let's see if I have any hidden code in here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so I had, so, and also I did the Hangout moments, which does the writing of screenshots from the Hangout into Drive. So I played around with the Drive API a little bit. But so it's possible to create uh, screenshots with JavaScript? Uh, in this special case, I'm just going to show you well, if I find it. Chrome has an extension uh, to get a PNG of, of the canvas. Yeah, but that, that doesn't work oh, for the video. Oh, it's a plugin, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but normally, from every, from every uh, canvas object, uh, you can get, just uh, get PNG. Where do I have it? Hangout moments. Extension. Uh, not this one. So actually this is quite a workaround really. What you have, you have uh, video objects. So actually if you look at the Hangout, um, you have one video object for the top and actually the whole strip below is one video object. So you don't have single videos but one video object and then you can take those two video objects the main video and the thumbnail strip and this video object has a do data URL function which captures the current screenshot so I have one screenshot for the top one for the bottom and then I take those two stitch them together in a canvas take the whole data URL and write this into the upload this to drive and then I link a drive to the moments <coughs> yeah, it's backwards, but it works. Actually, I think, oh no, it's not running, otherwise you would have the icon in here. So I actually put a, a screenshot icon on here into the DOM, which isn't active at the moment, but this one takes the screenshot, writes it into the Drive API, and if you go over to the Drive, let's see if it's still here, Photos, Hangout Moments. So I actually upload So this is actually a screenshot which is done from the application. So those are actually the two, two screenshots stitched together. And then I take this information and write it into the history with a URL. I'm just not sure if it's here. Hangout moments. Few moments. Yeah, and actually this image seems to be broken. But because I... Now the, the second problem was that I can't link directly the drive URL to the Hangouts because it's not a public URL because I up, oh, actually I uploaded the information public to make sure but still it didn't have nice schema.org markup so it didn't have a screenshot so we created the extra page where I actually would have the image in here so they have the correct schema.org markup for the history API. So one real problem, if we go back to the history API, is that there are not really many pages who have the correct schema.org markup to do anything with them, especially if you want to do check-ins. I have found no page with which the API is happy with, not even the Google Plus local pages, no Foursquare pages, which have the correct schema.org markup so that you can use it for a check-in. So actually one thing I did, I'm not sure if it's still in there, uh, Places. Where do I have it? Da, da, da. Uh, is it still here? Or is it on App Engine? Check in place. I think that's the one. Yeah, so actually, what I did, I wrote a small script which queries the Places API <coughs> with the Place ID. And then I create the schema.org markup, which I can use to check in. So I'm using the Places API in this case to generate a page which I can use for a check-in. Yeah. 
which again is actually the places should have already this information in there so you could use them but in this case I'm just adding the latitude and longitude in there because those are required for the check-in and then I use this page to do a check-in via the history API. So I have a question, um, how do you actually make money with this? So what are the, 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 the use cases customer wants? So actually what you can do is you could do something like in-app purchases for Hangout apps. So you can use the wallet API in combination with Hangout applications. So you can unlock features only based if people purchase stuff. That's one thing you could do, for example. So but for the Hangout to, to, to work, a user still has to have a Google account, right? Yes. And then it has to be um, active for Google Plus. Yes. At least uh, if you want to run Hangout applications, because they switch the normal video chat to the Hangout background at the moment. So you can use the Hangout with normal with non Google Plus users. But if you want to use applications, you need the full Hangout, and those are just available for Google Plus users. Because otherwise, you have like a Hangout light, which you can do with for normal video chat. So it's possible to, to, to chat with other people if they don't have Google Plus users. Yes. Okay. But I think, I'm not quite sure, but I think those are only two on two and not for the full Hangout. Okay. But as far as monetization goes, yeah, you can include Google Wallet or maybe PayPal API into your Hangout application. And then unlock features based on it so they have like more faces to choose from for the overlays. So. Any more questions to Gavin? Okay, then I'd like to thank you, Gavin.